It is you. It is you that God wants to speak to. God wants to speak to you tonight. James 1. James 1. Do me a favor, fellas. A couple things. A couple things. One is, um, if you have a phone, if you have a phone, put it in your pocket. Say, well, my Bible's on my phone. That's okay. Just listen. Put it in your pocket. Put it in your pocket. Put it away. Um, don't let it distract you. And then two, uh, I don't even need to mention number two because you guys took your hats off already um, uh, for me. People, um, people ask me all the time, why? What's the deal with the guys and the hats and, the, and, and, and the, those things? I just, there is, there's something to be said about decorum. There's something to be said about, um, about being set apart, about being different, uh, about showing respect. Um, and it's something that isn't taught very much anymore. Um, and I think Christian young men in particular ought to set the example in this thing. It used to be when you walked into a room that you would take your hat off when you walk in a room, and not all the time, but out of respect for a speaker, out of respect for the, the preaching of God's Word, man, take your hat off and just, and just do it without being asked. You know, just, um, uh, just to show, hey, listen, this is important to me. This is important to me. Say, well, my hair's not that great. Well, you can fix that, right? <laughs> like, like that's something you can do. In fact, we're going to talk a little bit about that today. James chapter number one. James chapter number one. James one. Where are we? James right, right. All right. James chapter number one. And uh, why don't you stand with me out of respect for the reading of God's word. James chapter number one. I'm going to read uh, verses 20 through 22 through 25. James 1, I'm going to read verses 22 through 25. Then I'm going to pray. And then when I'm done praying, you can be cheated. Right. So I'm not even going to have to ask you. I'm going to read James 1, 22 through 25. If you have your Bible, follow along with me. If you have your phone, put it in your pocket. If you're in a grown-up, that's okay. But if you're a teenager, put it away. James 1, 22 through 25. I'll pray. And then when I'm done praying, put your butt in a seat. All right? Uh, James 1, 22 says this, But be ye doers of the word. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a uh, man, or uh, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way straightway and forgetteth what manner of man he was. He forgets that he looks stupid. Um, Verse 25. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, whoever looks into the word of God and continueth therein and says, listen, I'm going to be a doer of God's word. So I'm going to change some things in my life. I'm going to change some things in my life so that that my life lines up with the word of God, so that my life lines up with what God wants me to do and God wants me to be. I'm going to be a doer of God's word that that person whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein. He being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be what? Shall be what? What's another word for blessed? What's another word for blessed? Yeah. This man shall be happy. This man shall be happy, shall be blessed in his deed, in that thing that he's doing. In what he is doing with his life, in what he is doing as a man, he will be what? He'll be happy. He'll be blessed. Lord, we love you. God, you're good. Lord, you're the King of kings. You're the Lord of lords. And you are worthy, God, to receive honor and glory and praise. And so we lift you up, Lord, and we praise you. And we thank you, God, for your goodness. And we thank you, Lord, that you deal with us according to your faithfulness and according to your mercy and your grace and not according to what we deserve. Oh God, I come before you and I ask you to be merciful to me, Lord. God, I'm a sinner. And Lord, these these young men tonight, they don't need to hear from me, they need to hear from you. And so Lord, God, I come humbly and I ask you to hide me behind your cross to fill me with your Holy Spirit. And I pray, God, that you would challenge us, Lord, as men. And God, as I talk to these men, I pray that you would make us and challenge us and change us to be the men that you would have us to be. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Would you make a decision right now? No one's, 
No one's looking. I'm, except me. I'm the only one. No one's looking. No need to be embarrassed. Would you just whisper in your heart and would you tell God, God, help me to put down my guard and help me to listen to your message tonight. Lord, fill these men with your spirit and control them. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. When we're kids, when we're kids, we're asked this question. What do you want to be when you grow up? What do you want to be when you grow up? I mean, they start asking this in preschool. If you went to preschool, you go to kindergarten, they ask you this in kindergarten. You go to first grade, they ask you. They have career day. They have bring your, bring your dad to work day, and he'll tell you about what, what he does. You know, we've all seen the Santa Claus. My dad is Santa Claus. Ah! Yeah. Uh, but they ask you this question. They say, hey, what do you want to be? What do you want to be? And, 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 and kids answer, I want to be a policeman. I want to be a fireman. I want to be an astronaut. When I was five years old, kid you not, I was asked this question, what do you want to be? I said, I want to be a bus boy when I grow up. <laughs> That's what I said. I said, I want to be a bus boy. Um, why? I think I was at a restaurant with my parents and I saw the bus boy picking things up and he got a, like a $1 tip. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> I got a dollar. <laughs> and I was like, I want to be a bus boy. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad desires change and things change? But we ask, we, we, we ask uh, those questions to kids. What do you want to be? As a society, we've come to a point where our profession becomes our identity. Listen to this. The introduction is so important on this. Um, there. Um, as a society, we've come to the point where our profession has become our identity. As an adult... We say this, you go to a job interview and we say this, we say, tell us about yourself. You talk to people and they say, tell me, tell me about yourself. And you hear people say, well, I'm a plumber. Well, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a business owner. I was at a networking event today and they said, tell us a little something about yourself. And people stood up and they said, I'm the founder of such and such company. I'm the president of such and such company. I'm a, a marketer uh, with, 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 with this company. Um, I work in sales or I work in finance and as a society we've we've identified ourselves by what we do for a living let me tell you this line of thinking that i am my profession is held by people who let life happen to them think about that for a minute think about that and let that stew let that ruminate i want you to think tonight bruce i want you to really think about this that line of thinking that i am what i do is held by people. Oh, do me a favor. Put your phone away. Put it in your pocket. Put it in your, like all the way in your pocket. There you go. That'll help you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, so that line of thinking is held by people that let life happen to them. They're not the doers that we're talking about. They're not the ones that are doing life. They're not the ones that are doing the work of God and doing what God wants them to do. They're just letting life happen to them. They live their life just by doing the next thing and the, and the next thing and whatever comes and whatever my parents say and whatever um, this person says or whatever society says, that's what I'm doing. So when they're asked to, tell, to describe who they are, they answer with, I'm a plumber. I'm a marketer. I'm a this or I, I, I'm a that. They don't have any real purpose. These are not James 1.22 people. They're not doing they're just existing. They're just existing. They're just sort of living. Everybody's got them, and they all stink. Excuses are like armpits. Everybody's got them, and they all stink. So think about this by way of introduction. There's people that talk about it. There's people that make excuses about why they're not doing it. And then there's men. There's men who complain about and criticize those who are doing it. There are people, there are men, who complain about and criticize those who are doing it. You hear them say things like, that's not how I would do it. If I was in charge, if I was the guy that was doing it, that's not how I would do it. That's why you're not in charge. 
And the truth is, the bigger the complainer shows how little you really know about the situation, how really little you really know about the leadership role and what's going on. You don't understand all the intricacies and everything that's gone into the decision that has been made. You don't know that. But there are those that will complain about it. They'll criticize those who are doing it. They will make fun of, they will mock, they will, they will, uh, they, they, they will bash the people that are in charge, the authorities that are in their life. Well, we just had a disagreement. We just uh, 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 agree to disagree. We just, and I'm not saying you have to agree with everybody on everything, but when you're at the point where you're just constantly criticizing your leaders, there's not something wrong with the leaders. Hold on. Amen! Right? Right? There are. There's people. Listen. Uh, thank you. But there are. Look. There's people. There's people that talk about it. There's people that make excuses about why they're not doing it. There's people that criticize those that are doing it. There are those people. And there are men that grow up that way. Let me connect the dots for you here before we move on. Let me connect the dots because you got to get this. Before we get into the message, you got to understand all this. Um, the man that starts off talking about it, talking about it, and never changes, never acts, just talks about it, that man ends up being the dude that complains and criticizes. That's where you end up. You end up being that dude. That's just a complainer. That's a griper. And by the way, people that are complaining, people that are griping are not happy people. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? You ever gotten a meal that you didn't like and were like, oh man, I'm so happy. Complained about, oh, my steak is really overcooked. Really overcooked. I love it. <clears throat> no, you're sending it back because you want to be happy with what you have. Complainers and criticizers are not happy. James 1 tells us that the man that does, the man that does is happy, is happy. That's how we know that the people that talk about it, that the people who criticize, that the people who make excuses for why they're not doing it are not happy. And we know this, that that person evolves through this, goes through it. And you'll meet people your whole lives that are on all different phases. You'll meet teenagers your whole life where they'll be talking about it. You'll meet some teenagers and some grown men that are just making excuses for why they can't be involved and why they can't do it. And then you'll meet people that are complaining and they're criticizing. And know this, that the people that are complaining or criticizing started off by talking about it and never doing it. And God doesn't want you to be that person. God wants you to be his man. God wants you to be a man of God. He wants that for you. When he wants that for you, he has a plan and a calling for you. And he's uniquely gifted you for that calling. There are things that you can do that I will never be able to do. Because God has not called me to be you. He's only called you to be you. You're special. You're unique. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. And you should be able to hold your bladder long enough to not have to get up. We're with men, so I'm just being honest. All right, let me tell you this. This is the dude. This is the dude. This, this person. This person who talks about it, makes excuses for it, and complains. This is the dude who just exists. He may have a good job. He may make a good salary, a good living. But he's not happy. He's not blessed. He's not happy because he's not living to his potential. Let me explain this. This dude, this dude... And not calling this guy a man. 
Because I want you to differentiate between a man of God and a dude. Because there's a bunch of dudes out there. A bunch of dudes. And God doesn't want you to just be a dude. God wants you to be a man of God. Amen? Amen. Okay? So there's a difference. This dude, this dude goes to church because his wife wants him to. This dude goes to church because his wife wants him to. This dude goes to church because he feels guilty if he doesn't go to church. This dude goes to church because his parents make him. That's this dude. If that's you, that's where you're living right now. But I'm not here to get down on you. I'm here to tell you, you don't have to be there. You don't have to live there. This dude, he goes to church because his wife wants him to. This dude goes to Bible college because his parents want him to. Goes to Bible college. I went to Bible college. Went to Bible college for four years. We used to call them Mama Called and Daddy Sent Boys. Mama called and Daddy sent. Mama said, you're going to Bible college. And Daddy said, what Mama said is going to happen. And they were there. And they just existed in Bible college. They just took up space. There was no purpose. No, well, there was no reason why they were there. They sit in preaching class. And they'd like get up and they'd pass the class and be like, why? Why are you learning to preach? I don't know. I don't know. By the way, they weren't happy. They weren't happy. Why? Because they weren't doing what God wanted them to do. And I'm not saying you have to go to Bible college and become a preacher to be a man of God. Because you don't. God doesn't want everyone to go to Bible college and become a preacher. God doesn't want everyone to be that guy. But God wants you to be his man in whatever he calls you to do. That's what he wants you to do. But they go to college without any purpose. Without any purpose. They don't know what God wants them to do. Why? Because they're just letting life happen to them. What do you do? I'm going to school. Why? I don't know. You're supposed to. You're supposed to. What do you want to do? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. What are you doing? I'm taking a gap year. <laughs> Why? Well, it's not my fault. I was too busy in high school. This dude acts or dresses a certain way in order to fit in. In order to fit in. In other words, this dude's a follower. This dude's a follower. I gotta dress that way because I gotta fit in with this crowd. I gotta act this way because I gotta fit in with, 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 with the cool kids. With the cool kids. Shut up. Be a man. Like really, but this dude, listen. This is the dude. This is the dude. If you feel that, pr and I understand the pressure's real. I know, I was a teenager. I was a teenager and I know the pressure to look cool. I know the crush pleasure to be cool. I know, I know the pressure to live in a moral life. I didn't go to a Christian school like many of you get to. I didn't go to a public school. All right, sorry, I didn't go to a home school. I went to a public school. I did. I had girls walk up to me in the hallway and give me a pat on the boom boom and think, hey, it's okay. I had girls walk up to me and say sexually explicit things. They did. Why? Why would they do that to you? Why? Because I was, I didn't weigh this much when I was in high school. <laughs> and I went to the gym and I worked out. And I was a baller. Was. Was. I'm telling you, I'll show you pictures. You're like, what? Dude, Ryan, behold your future, bro. All right? Listen, all conference second base. All right? Look, listen. Listen. I understand the pressure. I know that. I know that. But I know this. I know that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Right? I know that. So I'm just being real. This isn't like the flowery message. This isn't... This is like, this is just me talking to you the way I talk to my boys. Okay? So I hope you listen. Grasp this stuff. This dude acts or dresses a certain way just to fit in. I already said this, but this dude needs to take a gap year because he has no direction. No direction. No direction. Guys, this thing of being a teenager is so new in our society. It's so new. It, it, it really is. It's, it's very, very, very new. 
And what we're doing as a society is we're, we're trying to extend it. And, and teenagers are trying to stay teenagers longer. And there are parents, unfortunately, that have wrapped their identity around being parents and they just want to be parents and they want their kids that are growing up to just live at home and they just want to keep this family unit together but that's not how God designed it. God designed you to be a man, to grow up, to get married, to move out on your own and to do what he's called you to do. Right? That's what he has. That's what he does. So don't be this dude. That's what my notes say. Don't be this dude. Don't be this dude. Don't be that guy. Don't be the guy that complains. Don't be the guy that makes excuses. Don't be the guy that talks about it. Don't be that dude. Be God's man. So, what should I be? What should I be? Determined to be a man of God. You choose. Choose now. Choose today. Choose tomorrow and the day after that. Choose every day. Decide to be a James 1.22 Christian. Be a doer and not a complainer. Be a doer. Be a doer of God's word. So, here's the message now. Let me give you three action steps. Three action steps that you can start taking today so that you can be a James 1.22 Christian. Um, three action steps that you can take. Pulling my phone out so I don't go over. 7.20. Um, action number one. Action number one, here's the message. You want to be a man of God? You want to be a man of God? Yeah? Yeah? Okay, good. Action step number one, walk with God. This is so simple, guys. Walk with God. What's action step number one? Walk with God. Dominic, walk with God. Walk with God. You can. God, God is not like, like sitting with God, walking with God, being with God. It's, it's not like trying to sit at the cool kids' table. It's, like, it's not like you got to work up your nerve. You don't have to look a certain way. In fact, you'll never look good enough to be with God. But God's grace has allowed you to be in his presence. If you're saved, if you're a believer, you're robed in the righteousness of God and you're welcome at his table. So determine, I'm going to walk with God. I'm going to walk with God. Watch this. This is real important. This is huge. Catch this. If you catch this, this will help you your whole life. A lot of times we get the cart before the horse and we preach, turn from sin. We preach, quit smoking, quit drinking, quit fornicating, quit, quit your wicked, lascivious lifestyle. Cut your hair, hippie. Like we preach all, and it's good. It's good stuff because God's word says that stuff, okay? But the way you get victory, catch this. The way you get victory over your sin is not by trying to quit this stuff on your own. The way you get victory from your sin is not by saying, okay, I'm going to quit doing that. I'm going to quit and I'm going to, I'm going to, in my strength, I'm going to do this. Zechariah chapter four says, not by might, not by power, but by thy spirit, saith the Lord. It's by His Spirit. So here's how I get victory over sin. I walk with Jesus. James chapter 4 says, draw nigh, nigh to God and He'll draw nigh to you. Right? So as I walk with God, God is holy. Amen? Amen. Okay? God is holy. God is holy. God is righteous. God is perfect. The Bible says about Enoch. Enoch was a man. What was Enoch? He wasn't a dude. Enoch was a man. The Bible says about Enoch, not very much, but it says this, Enoch walked with God and he was not, for God took him. That Enoch walked so closely with God that one day God said, you know what, we're closer to my place than your place, so just come over. And you know what? Enoch never left. That man is in heaven right now. Chilling with God. How cool is that? 
How cool is that? He walked with God. Look, if I walk with God, he is going to take me away from my addiction to porn. If I walk with God, he's going to take me away from the peer pressure that I'm feeling to fit in. If I walk with God, he's going to take me away from my sin. He's going to take me away from the temptation because he's holy. And so we've got to stop putting the cart before the horse. You've got to do this. If you want to be a man of God, walk with God. Spend time with him. Read his Bible. Read the word. Read it for yourself. Don't read it for school. Don't memorize it just for school. Read it because it's right. Read it and say, God, I'm reading it, and I don't even understand what it says, but I'm reading it because I want to know you. And just be sincere about it. And when you read it and you don't get anything, be like, God, I didn't get anything, but I trust you. I trust you. Pray. That's doing, right? Reading is doing. Praying is doing. Do that. Pray. Talk to God. God, I'm having a hard time. Man, I'm having a hard time obeying my parents. I'm having a hard time with this addiction. I'm having a hard time with this thing. God, I need your help. Or, God, I love you. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for not expecting me to be perfect. Thank you that you treat me according to your faithfulness and according to your grace and not according to what I deserve because I deserve hell. Have that conversation with them. Why? Because it'll change you. It'll make you a man and not just a dude. Walk with God. Walk with God. Read your Bible. Pray and talk to God and listen to God. This is doing. Reading is doing. Praying is doing. Listening is doing. Listen to God. Listen to God. I'm going to mention this because this is a purity conference. Okay? You know what God says? You know what God says about purity? You know, Angel, you know what God tells you what you need to do to stay pure? He says, run and hide. That's what he says. He says, run. He says, flee fornication. You know how Joseph stayed pure? He ran from a little woman. He ran away from that little girl. He ran away from her. Big bad Joseph ran away. Why? Because he was a man. You know how you stay morally pure? Listen to God. Run. You know what the stupid dude says? I can handle it. I can handle it. It's no big deal. I could take it. It's just the love scene in a movie. No big deal. It's just a poster. It's just a screensaver. It's just a picture on a text. It's just, by the way, it sounds like excuses, doesn't it? And there's people that make excuses and there are people that do. Right? Be a man of God. Read his word. Pray. And listen to him. Listen. When God speaks to you, God's speaking to you tonight. I know it. I know he is. When God speaks to you, listen. Listen. Be man enough to tell your friend, you know what? You're stupid. I love you. You're my friend. But you're stupid. And I've been stupid for letting you be that way. And I've been stupid for living this way. And I'm sorry. Will you forgive me? Be a man. Amen? Do it. Be a man. Be a doer. Be a doer. Action step number two. I got four minutes. Walk with growers. Not only walk with God, but walk with growers. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 and 25 tell us to be with people that will provoke us that will encourage us to love and good works that'll encourage us and challenge us it tells us specifically in verse 25 that you'll get that at church but walk with growers walk with growers so not just walk with god but walk with growers that is this spend time with older believers that are real men spend time with those people 
Spend time with them. Get some mentors in your life. Identify them by their spirit. You can identify growers by their positive, encouraging messages. You can, you can identify them because they're not complainers. They're always encouraging. They're always uplifting. They're excited about what's going on in church. They're not complaining about it. Well, back in the day, we used to do it like... That's fine. Leave those dudes be. You find the growers. This is exciting. This is great. Oh, wow. We're going to have all these people in church on Easter. It's going to be fantastic. It's going to be great. People are going to get saved. Lives are going to change. And spend time with them. Spend time with them. Um, there. Uh, people, find people who are ahead of where you are. Dominic, find people who are ahead of where you are spiritually. And spend time with them. You know who's a good guy to spend time with? Michael Banks. Michael Banks is a good man. Michael Banks is a man of God. He's a man of God. Spend time with him. Get to know him. When you see him, don't just run by him. Don't just walk by him like this. Drives me nuts. By the way, that's a dude. Put your phone away. Look people in the eye. Shake their hands. Lift your hat up so they can see your eyes. Be a man. And spend time with them. Spend time with them. Shoot the breeze with them. Talk to them. I don't know what to talk about. Just say, hey, ask him about his day. Ask him how he's doing. And let him rub off on you. Ask him to be a mentor. Guys like that. Talk to them. Number three. Number one, walk with God. Number two, walk with growers. Number three, walk with giants. Walk with giants. In 1 Corinthians 11, 1, Paul says this, Follow me as I follow Christ. The Apostle Paul was a giant, right? He was a giant of the faith. First missionary, church planner. God used him to write over half the Old Te- New Testament. Not the Old Testament. Half the New Testament. Man, he was a giant. Walk with giants. We have giants here. We have some giants of the faith here at our church. Spend time. I would tell you this. Get to know Get to know Pastor Neil. I would tell you, get to know Pastor Neil. I would tell you this, get to know Michael Battle. Get to know him. He's going to be ordained this summer. This summer. Get to know him. Spend time with him. Volunteer. Volunteer to be in kids ministry and do it, even if it's just to be able to rub shoulders with him, do it. Why? Do it. Because you need to. You need to walk with giants. You need to walk with people that are way ahead of you. Walk with professionals. Not just pastors, but professionals. Professionals that are way ahead of where you are. Get to know men like Jamie Allen. Get to know men like Jamie Allen who are successful. Get to know him. He was the commander at Nellis Air Force Base. Get to know him. Get to know Craig Granger. He's a good guy. Get to know him. Say, who's Craig Granger? Ask Liam. He's a good guy. Get to know him. Get to know John Gelsdorp. Man, you know, there's a lot of guys I could mention. There are a bunch of guys I could mention. So many. So many. I'm just telling you this to tell you this. You are blessed to be at Liberty Baptist Church. You are. You're blessed to be here. So, Get your head out of your phone. Out of the other place, too. Wake up and be a man. Walk with God. Walk with growers. Walk with giants. So what do you want to be? What do you want to be? I want to be a man of God. I hope so. Do you want to be happy? Do you? You want to be happy? Well, it starts by being a doer, by being a man of God. Lord, fill me with your spirit. Fill these men with your spirit. And I pray, God, that you would call them, Lord. And I pray, God, that they would make the decisions, Lord, that you would have them make for your honor and for your glory. (laughs) 